Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to shoot a video on how to set up your sections, your rows, your columns, everything inside of ClickFunnels at 100% width. This is something that people ask for all the time. I wrote the code a long time ago, and I finally realized today I never actually shot a video on this, so that's what we're going to do today. So first thing I did is I just came into ClickFunnels, and I just put in a bunch of rows. I made a, just a blank white one here at the top. And then I put in um, one section here. Let's just take a look at that section. And we have that set as full page, not wide, anything else. We have this set as a full page. And then I just kind of put in this yellow background on it. I got 20 top and bottom and nothing left and right. You see if I do that, it just shrinks up the area in the middle, the row in the middle. So then inside of that, I just put in a row, a two column row right here, blue background, of course. And again here, 20 top, 20 bottom. And if we move the padding left and right, you can see what it does right there. So we'll just leave that at zero. So we're gonna have a little edge around there. And then we can go into, let's see here, this, the next one here, let's just look at this element. This is just a headline element. And all I did on this headline element was to come in and just make the background white. So we'll just put that back to white. Okay, there we go. So now that background is white. And then the last thing we need to set up is our columns. So we'll come into columns. We'll come to our first column right here. Again, I dropped in a background of red. And then down here, top and bottom, again, we have some uh, padding on here. We'll just uh, show what happens there. So the red just gets bigger at the top. So I have 20 at the top and the bottom. And then left and right, I have zero. But again, you can see as this comes in, you're going to get more of that red on the side. But again, we're trying to make everything 100% width on here. And so that's why you want to come in and you want to make sure that all the paddings left and right are already set at zero before we start doing any of this. So now all I did then is I just copied this thing four times and away we go. So here, let's go into the live page itself. And the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to set this row right here so that it can go out to 100% all the way out to the edge. And so we're just going to right click and we're going to inspect this element. Now I'm going to show you how to do it in the inspector. And then I will show you the actual CSS code for it. So here we got this container, which is a full width container. It says right here, full container. And that is the section that we're dealing with right now. And so we're going to open that up because we have to come to our container inner. And right here in the container inner, you come down here and you see it says full container, container inner, and it's at 170 pixels. So instead of 170, what we want to do is we want to make this 100%. And normally what I do here is I put in an important tag. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. In this case here, we'll just put in the important tag. So now you see what it did is it made all of them 100% width. So let me just copy out part of this right here. And let me open up our thing. So let's just say here we want to do this for our section. And the and the asterisk and the slash, that's just to indicate that it is a comment. And so now let's open this up, make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to paste in what we just pulled out there. So we have full container, container inner. And then inside of that, we just want to put in width of 100% exclamation mark important semicolon, and then we put in a left curly bracket to close out that CSS statement. Now, you're going to say to yourself, I don't want every single one of these columns to be 100% width. I only want the top one to be 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into the section above it right here. And you can see in the code, we have section 88379. Well, how we can get that number, besides the fact we can just copy it right here, of course, we can just double click and, and copy it right here if we wanted to. We just pull it out right there. But what we can do is go back into our code and we're going to look at this section right here and we're going to click on the gear. 
We're going to come down to the bottom where the hashtag is, and we're going to copy this out. It's exactly the same, except here we have the hashtag on it, and actually we want to keep the hashtag on there. So let me just put that in right here. We go hashtag, and then we will put in the rest of this, including that space, but take out the full container, and we'll copy that, paste this right down here. And now what this would do is this will only make just this top section here that'll make that 100% width and the rest of these will all be normal. So let's copy this out of here and we're gonna come in here to our custom CSS and we are going to open this up. I'm gonna delete out everything in here. I'm gonna do that. And now, so what we're saying is because we got, we got a problem here because we're saying full container, all of it, and then just the section. So actually, let's just take out this part as well, and we'll just have that one section be the full width. And I had a little bit of a typo in there, so I fixed that up, and now it's working. You can see this went to full width, where everything else stayed at the more narrow width. In fact, I can... Uh, have a little uh, plug-in that I built for myself here that I can change the width there. So you can see just the top one now is full width. So now let's say we want to get rid of this blue on the outside here so that the column goes 100% width. So let's go into right here and let's reload this page. And we already have the section of full width, so let's make these columns full width. So now let's go in here, and we will right-click and inspect on this. So what we're going to look for is our row. So this is the entire row, and we're going to come down into that row, and we can close up this column right here. And in each of these columns, they have the class of inner content. So we can focus on that, on the inner content. And then again, here what we want to do is we want to just come down and we want to say that we want the padding left and the padding right to be zero. So let's just type that in here. And now you see here on the left-hand side, all the blue padding went away. And then we can just hit tab and we can just say padding right of zero pixels as well. And like always, we really should put an important tag here at the end because what can happen with the padding, especially on the side padding, if somebody came in and they grabbed the hold of that slide bar as you saw and it moves it back and forth, what that would actually do is probably override this tag. So we want to make sure we have important in here just in case somebody has side padding set on the row or the column or anything else. That way this will override it. And then of course we would do the exact same thing for this column right here. But what I realized I just did, I did not put this into both. If I had put it in here where it said inner content, then it would have automatically done both of these. So let's just go back in to the code itself. And in fact, let me just come over here because we got the same thing as before. So let's just come down and we're going to say dot ROW space dot inner content. Put in a couple carriage returns and we'll go padding left of zero pixels important semicolon padding right of zero pixels and important. And so now let's just take this and put it into our code and let's see what happens. So we'll just come back into our custom CSS and we will put in V and you're going to see here it went away on both of these. And you will also see down here at the bottom, it took off some of the column here, some of the padding on the left and right side of the column. Not all of it went away because some of it came off from the top one up here. So now uh, what we want to do is let's say again, we only want it for this top row. So let's come back in here and we will take a look at that row. So let me see here. We got row and here's the name of the row. And again, you can get this off of the hashtag as well, but let's just copy this out of here. And instead of row right here, let's put in our hashtag and then paste in the row. And as I did that, let me just turn it back off. 
you'll see it went out to the edge here and it's not affecting these other rows down here further. Now there is a third place you could have padding and that would be right here on the columns itself. So you come here to call inner. So you'd have row, let me just show you the code over here. So you have row space call inner. You can do padding left and right, but actually this should be taken care of with the slider inside of the column itself. So if you turn the column slider to zero, you should not have any kind of padding here and so now there is one fourth breakpoint that we need to deal with, and that's if we get below 1170 pixels. So as I'm sliding along here, you can watch the numbers up here in the upper right hand corner and see how wide I am. So we come down here and then right there at 1170. For some reason inside of ClickFunnels, when you get to that 1170 breakpoint, it decides it wants to put padding back in here. So what we do is we come down here and let me show you the code on that. So we got, we have an at media query, which I'll tell you what that means in a second. And then we have row and call inner, just like we had up here. So we have this, now you can set your padding here as, you can set it as zero pixels or 10 pixels or whatever. But I also say here, if you want to kill the padding altogether, you can just put in the term unset and I will show you that. But now what it also does is at, because this is a media query. So what it says, is on a screen, there's other things you could have as printers and all kinds of other stuff, but on a screen like we're working with here, that between 1170 and 770 pixels where ClickFunnels puts in this extra padding, we're saying that we want the padding taken back out again. So let's take a look at that and we'll see here, let's just scroll down in the code. You see here in the code, it says at media screen with 1170 to 770. So all we got to do here is, is uh, just for an example here is we can just turn this off and it goes away. Or we can come in and we can just put in, let's see if we put in zero pixels if that will also work. That will work as well. Or we can put in the term unset, which basically also means to turn it off. And then we will do that for both examples here because see, see it actually lines out the code and makes it go away as if it never was there. So those are our three ways of doing it. So let me just come back up into here. Let me grab this code. Let's copy that. Let's go into our funnel, into our CSS. And let's paste that in. So let's just do this. We'll come in here and we'll just make this unset. And again, unset. And because we have just the row here and the call enter, this is going to hit all of them on the page. So let us save this. But what we can do now is because we want to focus on, again, just this row right here. So let's right click on there. Let's find out what that row was again. Here was that row. We can just double click here or you can go to the hashtag and we'll come back into our code itself. Let's come into our custom CSS. And instead of row, we're going to take that out. We're going to put in a hashtag, paste this in. And I just realized that my instructions were actually wrong. I had here to put in unset without the important tag, and that's not working. So you do have to put in the important tag here at the end. So let's go into our code. Let's go back into our custom CSS. And I'll just do it on one for right now. Let's save this. Reload the page, and then let's just bring this down below 1170. And you can see when I do it, the right hand side here still puts in the margins, but the left hand side took it out. So you want to make sure you put that important tag in there as well. So let's just go back in, take a look at the custom CSS at the end, and let's do that. So in order to get this to work, you can either do it for all of the sections, all of the rows, all of the everything, or you can do it specific sections just and rows by just putting in the CSS ID selectors. You want to use the term important at the end of everything so that it will override 
what the original settings are inside of ClickFunnels, and then it should work just fine. So that's how you do it. That's how you make everything on the page 100% full width. Use whichever ones you need to get the effect that you want on your page. So if you got any questions on that, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.